Hey superstars, it's your best friend Scott and I just broke my favorite pair of headphones, but the show must go on, right? Hey, this is our September recap. Uh, we've got a ton of ERs, some amazing care packages and some pretty cool pickups and I don't want to keep you fine people waiting, so let's do it to it. Hey everyone, it's Don from Don's Field of Dreams Cards. I like to say my name twice when I introduce myself. I also like cigars and players that are kneeling and Scott's a big jerk. Mr. Fisherbike wanted to hear about who influenced us to start our YouTube channels or who we've influenced to start their own channels. My channel's a little different, so my story's a little different. About five years ago, I was on an expedition climbing K2 and I had a really good Sherpa, you know, I believe his name was Harnoop or it could be Hartaj. I have a hard time remembering. So if you're watching this Harnoop Hartaj, I do apologize. Anyway, when you spend that much time with someone, especially doing something as scary as mountain climbing, you kind of open up and talk about life's big questions, you know, like what shape is the sky? Could life possibly be one big computer simulation? Or who knew what time it was when the first clock was made? One night we were eating some dal bot, which is like a rice with lentils. It's absolutely terrible, but you take what you can get on the side of a mountain. And I asked Harnoop that even though I'm kind of soft-spoken and quiet, what if I started a YouTube channel? And Harnoop's eyes got really big and he was like, you don't have a YouTube? Even my grandma has a YouTube, brah. And I asked him, but what if I suck? What if I make a complete fool of myself or I get laughed off the internet? And his response was that the world will tell you if you suck. You just do it and you find out. And no one has ever been kicked off the internet for being a fool. In fact, the more foolish, the better. And you got to think about things not like what's the worst thing that could happen, but rather what's the best thing that could possibly happen. You could open yourself up to amazing opportunities, become internationally famous, and make a ton of new best friends. So that's what made me start YouTubing Harnoop or Hartaj. Thanks for the push, even though we never did make it to the top of K2. I couldn't stand eating that doll bot anymore, so I pretended to have altitude sickness. Man, that stuff was nasty, and I really needed a big, fat, juicy cheeseburger because cheeseburgers are the best. Sorry about the little fib, Harnoop, but I'm so glad you convinced me to start making videos. I am having a blast. Um, Jason, I hope that answers your question. Great idea, dude. I've been loving seeing these responses. Welcome to Card Room Live, where uncomfortable pauses are to be expected. Sixties cards make me want to vomit. Let's take a look at some Eddie Wakus. We're going to go up north a little because my bestie Alex at Jay's Mix is getting close to 800 subs and he wants to see cards from his favorite team, the Toronto Blue Jays. He's a heck of a guy and has always been so kind like any good Canadian, so I got to support him too, eh? Um, here's an autographed Joe Carter gifted to me by my BFF Austin. And here's a Robbie Alomar piece I did and had signed in person. Wow. Is that your art? Yep. That's great. You want a copy? Oh, yeah, you can send it. Can you have a copy there? Yeah. That's an awesome, yeah. How are you guys do that? Just painting it? Uh, okay. Get it right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you get to 800 soon, Alex. Keep being awesome, sir. Go Team Jesus! Woo! I wonder if Dick Perez will write me a recommendation for my Misfits application. This one is from my best friend, Rocket Rick. Rick wants to hear who we think are the top five players from each era. You know me, normally I would just pick the five best Cleveland players, but I want to show you that I'm not a total homer. Plus, if I did that, once I got through the 60s through 80s, the pickings would be kind of slim. So there are a lot of players here, so I'm not going to go into great detail. So here goes. 1887 to 1910, we've got King Kelly, Honus Wagner, Cy Young, Christy Mathewson, and Nat Blagiway. 1910 to 1925, I'm going with Walter Johnson, Ty Cobb, Tris Speaker, that Babe Ruth guy, and Rogers Hornsby. 1925 to 1940, I'm going with Lou Gehrig, Hank Greenberg, Jimmy Fox, Josh Gibson, and Cool Papa Bell. 1940 to 1955, I've picked Jackie Robinson, Larry Doby, Bob Feller, Satchel Page, and Stan Musial. 1955 to 1970, I'm going with Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Roberto Clemente, Mickey Mantle, and Frank Robinson. 
1970 to 1985, I'm going with Pete Rose, Nolan Ryan, Mike Schmidt, Rod Carew, and Joe Morgan. 1985 to 2000, I've picked Ricky Henderson, Greg Maddox, Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, and Ken Griffey Jr. 2000 to 2015, I'm going with Manny Ramirez, Randy Johnson, Albert Pujols, Ichiro, and Miggy. 2015 to 2023, I've picked Jose Ramirez because I'm still kind of a homer, Shohei, Mike Trout, Mookie Betts, and Ronald Acuna Jr. So there you go, Rick. Thanks for making me expand my horizons. Oh, hey, it's Dustin. You know, I was thinking maybe I could show some Kirby Puckets and make some fart noises, yeah? Slayer. What's next? Oh, my best friend Jake from Legends Never Die, he's celebrating 900 subs and he wants to know why the Misfits will not accept his application. Uh, well, Jake, I have some footage here that shows that you have zero tolerance for Misfits and I think it's some pretty damning evidence. So let's take a look. All except for this, this one Misfit. Herbie! Aren't you finished painting that yet? I just don't like to make toys. What? You don't like to make toys? Hermie doesn't like to make toys. Do you mind telling me what you do want to do? Well, sir, someday I'd like to be a, a dentist. Not for you. Finish the job or you're fired. I know that footage is a little old, but it is obvious that Jake is actually Foreman Elf, and I can't help but blame the Misfits for not accepting uh, that sort of prejudice into their group. Um, poor Hermie. Jake, shame on you, dude. Hello! Everybody! <clears throat> That was one O for every subscriber I have. Not that we count subscribers because we count friends. This is a fake VR from my besties Dylan from Double D and Adam from Vintage Sanctuary. Adam recently visited Dylan in Hawaii and they had a discussion about how great it is that everybody collects differently, but they wanted to know what YouTubers most closely collected the same way as they do. Uh, I thought it was an awesome idea and a great question, so I had to figure out who collects like I do. My first thought went to Nina because she collects Indians and Guardians and she's quite an artist, but I kind of think Nina tends to shift her focus around a little bit occasionally. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but Nina and I are pretty close. I thought about other team collectors, but I don't really know of any that stick to it as hard as I do. Dustin does Minnesota teams, but I see him as more of a player super collector, maybe. There are some good Phillies collectors like Mike O and Wesker Griff, and the Mets collectors like Mets Rule and Mookie Chilson. Mookie and I may be kind of close. It's a really tough question, um, but part of me thinks Alex from Bowman 53, and here's why. Alex does not team collect. Well, not really. His big focus right now is 50s New York teams, so he stays in his lane, as it were, kind of like I do. He doesn't seem concerned with amassing a huge collection or the latest hobby news or fluctuations in the card market. It's all about the cards and how they make him feel. And he's a filmmaker, so he's an artist that uses his skills to enhance his hobby, and that is the big one, I think. So we don't collect the same things, but I feel like we're riding the same waves. See, that was a callback to Dylan. Get it? Great question, guys. Hello and welcome. You know, something seems a little off here. Wait a second. Okay, that's better. All right, I got a couple of new best friends, guys, that I'm not super familiar with, but I would like to get to know better. This first one is Detroit Collector. He wants to see some of our favorite oversized cards, and I love oversized cards. They're very underrated, and they're very cool. I really like these red mans. There's Feller and Rosen and Early Win. Uh, of course, there's Exhibits. There's my Doby and my Satch. And how about some cool Smoky Bear cards? And then I keep showing off my picture packs. Here's Bill Veck, Al Rosen. Larry Doby 48 and 49 and Satchel Page 48 and there's the 49 and here's my Jim Hegan all-star pinup and my Ohio Don Mossy. Yo guys I'm like super stoked I just went to the hardware store and I bought like 18 more gallons of Smurf blue paint now I'm gonna paint my whole house right after I go surfing. Whoa Smurf rhymes with surf crazy right double shaka. Another new best friend I want to get to know better, Commenting Collector. He wants to see our non-sports cards. 
I know this one is late, but I still wanted to show some support. Here are some tobacco cards. It's fun to pick those up sometimes when they speak to me. They're, they're usually pretty cheap. And some of them are really gorgeous. I'm slowly working on the Wacky Packages sets. Not very far in any of the series, but yeah, I love these two. And here is my small collection of Mars Attacks cards. Another set I'm slowly working on low-key, but I'm glad to have what I have, though. Hey guys, how are ya? Jim here, coming back with another wicked awesome video. I was going to go to the Packy and grab a kega, but I couldn't find my car keys. Instead, I'm going to show you some Yaz cards. My bestest friend in the whole wide world, The Drew, A Vintage Legacy, is celebrating his 100th video, and he wants us to talk about franchise sports players, guys who've spent their entire careers with one team. For Cleveland, the list is pretty short if you limit it to guys with at least 10 years. Jack Rainey was an outfielder from 1908 to 1922. A uh, good but not great player, but he was the first batter to face Babe Ruth, and he was the first former player to ever become a broadcaster, and he's now enshrined in the Hall of Fame as a Ford C. Frick Award recipient. Then there's Guy Morton. I don't have a card for him, but he was a pretty good pitcher. Mel Harder pitched for Cleveland for 20 years. He was an excellent pitcher and later one of the best pitching coaches in baseball. And then some guys you've probably heard of before. We've got Bob Feller. Bob Lemon and Al Rosen all spent their entire playing careers in Cleveland. His career isn't over, but I definitely want to mention Jose Ramirez, who left at least $100 million on the table when he signed an extension with Cleveland because he wants to play his entire career here. Hey guys, I am Adam and welcome to the Vintage Sanctuary. Before I show you my latest in a long line of glorious pickups, I'd love to tell you a cheesy joke, but I'm just afraid you might be lactose intolerant. My best buddy and another super supportive Canadian, the autograph fisherman John Burgess, is celebrating 400 subs and he wants us to make a lineup for any sport consisting of underrated players and then give a shout out, you know, because he's Canadian, to a channel with under 400 subs. That's pretty easy to do a Cleveland lineup for that. Uh, for catcher, Jim Hegan, he was offensively challenged but handled some of the best pitching staffs in history and was well regarded for his defense. For first base, I got David Segui, another great defensive player, not a power hitter, but he could hit for average. Second base, I'm going to go with Jeff Kent. Maybe he should get into the hall, but he is notoriously grumpy. Uh, shortstop, I've got Joe Sewell. He is in the Hall of Fame, but nobody ever talks about him. He played for 14 years, and he only struck out 114 times during his entire career. For third base, I've got Ken Keltner. He was a seven-time All-Star, um, highly regarded fielder, and he could hit too. In the outfield, I've got Michael Brantley. He's got a 297 career batting average. That's uh, really solid in today's game. He struggles staying healthy, though. Um, I like Shin Su Chu. He had a long career, decent power, just enjoyed watching him play. And uh, Dale Mitchell, another guy you just could not strike out. He played 11 years, and he only struck out 119 times. For a pitcher, let's go with Mike Garcia. Uh, he had a 327 ERA in his 14-year career, and he had 79 wins from 1951 to 1954. And I think he's overlooked because he pitched on a staff with Bob Feller, Bob Lemon, and Early Wynn. As far as that shout out, let's go with my bestie Dave at Legends of the Dugout, who hosts Unprepared and Live. That's a super fun hangout sometimes on Friday nights. And Dave's a great guy. He's been doing this for a year and he's criminally under 200 subs. So go check him out for sure. Hello, friends. I am John. His name is Connor. John Connor. No, no, John, the 3D80s kid. And I think rookie cards are lame. <laughs> Unless they're rookie cards of famous historical figures. This is a lot of VRs. Uh, my best friend Pepino Man, he recently asked us to imitate other YouTubers uh, for the Four Collectors channel. And the problem with that for me is that I am no good at impressions. And I definitely wouldn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So maybe I shouldn't do that one. So what's next? Recently, I showed off the Ted Williams art I did for Dylan at Double D Vintage, and I made and signed a bunch of cards for Dylan to give away. Well, Dylan is doing something really cool with these. He's giving them away if you buy a card from him on eBay and leave a message letting him know you want one. 
And not only that, when you request a Surfer Ted card, he'll donate up to $5 from each sale to a charity. He didn't really tell me he was going to do that, and that just warmed my heart. I love it. Thanks again, Dylan. So cool that you would do that, and I'm honored to be a part of it. This is from my best friend, Math Bowler. He sent me a care package, which is kind of silly because he comes and visits me all the time, but I'm still excited to see what he sent my way. This says, hello, Scott, for being a great best friend. I wanted to send you a random care package. Take care. Your bestie, Stephen Math Bowler. Here's some autographs. Uh, Zach Sorensen, Cole St. Clair, Casey Blake, and JJ Sherrill. This is fun. It's a Kenny Lofton on a Pirates card in a Giants uniform. There's uh, some Flintstones Browns cards. Barney's a kicker, and so is Fred, apparently. The Browns would draft a kicker. Oh, look at this awesome sauce. Some kid thought Sandy, Jim, and Bob here needed some fancy facial hair. That is so fun. I love it. And I have never seen these. These are Ohio lottery tickets. This one has Larry Doby, and this one is Rocky Calavito. Nicely done, Stephen. I love these. Thank you. One more from my bestie, D. Ah! I've got my little pennant ready. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. It says, Dearest Bestie Scott, I have the worst handwriting in the world. I also am a very poor speller. My memory is garbage and I'm short. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, you were awesome. My objective with this package is to be a delight industry. You don't need to send me anything, Doug. You're already delightful, buddy. And I can read your handwriting, so no worries there. Okay, uh, here I am blessing you with my art and my rookie card. Don't even mention it. You're welcome. Really happy to call you my best friend. Enjoy Doug. Doug's Ricky card looks just like him. It's uncanny. Let's see the cosmic awesomeness that Doug sent over. We'll start with this one. Doug and I are both Andre Semenis fans, so we got the chrome blue and the oil slick teal. Those are fancy. Here's a gold 2001 team card and a Dr. Styx autographed rookie. I love that. Er, my gersh, Dougie sent me the Liebig Children Behaving Badly cards. He loves this set, and he's made me love this set. These are so, so fun. Not so-so. I mean, like, so very fun. They're almost like pre-war garbage pail kids. I'm giddy. What the what? A 1951 Burke Ross Bob Lemon. That is gorgeous. Dang, Doug. And we're not done. Wowza. A uh, 76 Indians team card and a mint nine. Tomato red uniforms in all their glory. And Frank Robinson right there. And another slab. Whoa, this is a uh, 63 Indians team card. Super sharp and crispy. I love that. And we're not done yet. There's something in here too. Nice. A uh, Wheaties ad about their trading cards. I actually have that feller. That is really cool too. You've outdone yourself, Doug. Unbelievably awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's going to be hard to top that. Um, I've got more from my Guardians autograph project. Here is David Fry. Josh Bell, Zach Collins, Ronaldo Lopez, Sandy Leone, and Gavin Williams. That puts me at 87%, I think. I picked up some more from my 48 and 54 World Series roster autograph projects too, but I put those away already. I had never bought anything from JT at Triple Crown 24, which is silly, so I picked up this Heritage CC Sabathia to remedy that. And Adam at Splendid Sports did a video about Tag's AI grading, and I thought it was kind of intriguing. So I picked up this Jose Ramirez rookie, really slick looking slab, and the grading report that came with this is very detailed, crazy stuff. Rick at Vintage Oddball Cards turned me on to this 49 Bowman lot, a couple of Lou Boudreaux rookies, Dale Mitchell, Gene Bearden, Sam Zoldak, Ken Keltner, Hank Edwards, Mike Tresh, Hal Peck, Steve Gromek, and Hall of Famer Joe Gordon. And there were quite a few that I needed for my team set. And most of those are really nice, so there were also a few upgrades in there as well. So thanks for the tip, Rick. And finally, my birthday was last week, and every year I try to splurge on one really cool card. This year I picked up a 1933 Tattoo Orbit Earl Averill. This is a card that I've been actively searching for for three years, and I never see them pop up. I think these Tattoo Orbit cards are awesome. They're almost like Diamond Stars with that Art Deco look, but they incorporate a photograph instead of a painting of the player. And I am absolutely smitten with this one. I did not need a six. I would have been happy with any grade. But like I said, I've been looking for years and my patience finally paid off. I know, Dylan, it's a hair off center and I am sorry. So that's it for now. I've got to thank Mr. Fisherbike, Jay's Mix, Rocket Rick, Legends Never Die, Detroit Collector, Commenting Collector, The Drew, and the Autograph Fisherman John Burgess for the VRs. Pepino and four collectors for the VR that I definitely did not do. And Dylan and Adam for the fake VR. And Dylan again, just for being awesome. Thanks to Math Bowler and Deke. 
Go check out any of these guys that you're not familiar with. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Love your hobby and make it unique to you. Hey, superstars, you're my best friend and 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 you're my best friend. Did you know I like Indians cards and Don Mossy? I have trouble spelling my own name, though.